Crossarc 200S AC DC front control panel. The machine is pretty easy to use and everything is controlled from the main control knob, the Synergic knob. As you can see, when you select your program, you get a Synergic graph. Let's go right back to the start and let's start from the beginning. So if we go to menu, ticket, it brings us to the beginning of the Synergic settings. As you can see then, we can either go TIG and pick a program, or we can go stick and pick a program. So we're just gonna tick it, and that'll bring us into the basic Synergic graph for TIG welding. As you can see here, this tells you what the program is at the present moment in time. Here we're showing the trigger on, trigger off, normal trigger setting. Here we're showing HF. The setting at the moment is for DC. And as you can see in the center, it's telling you that the current is set for 80 amps. So let's go through the graph. So if we turn the knob, you'll see a little line will appear on the graph. This tells you what you are adjusting. So if we go right back to the beginning, this here is our pre-gas. Now our pre-gas setting is therefore to ensure that gas is there at the torch when we start welding. So you want a little bit of time in here, probably about 0.3, something like that, is a nice enough gas. So this is, as you press the trigger, before you get welding current, you've got gas. The next setting is your start amps. Now, obviously, we, if we're welding at 80 amps, we don't want to press the trigger and immediately the welders start up at 80 amps. You know, it's, it's not smooth. It could create problems in our, weld, in our weld or damage the material or anything like that. So what we'd do here is we would start at a base current and then ramp up to our welding current. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start at 10 amps, which is a nice starting angle. And then what we're going to do is we're going to ramp up in half a second, something like that. So it's slow enough, but fast enough. So you're not waiting for ages to get up to your welding current. And then obviously as we come up to the top, we've got our welding current. At the present moment in time, it's set for 80 amps. This is where I would leave the adjuster in normal use. So leave it so that the bar here is set into the center. And then when you're welding, if you need to adjust the welding current very quickly, you just tick it and you can adjust. We're gonna do the same on the down. So obviously, if we're, for instance, if we're welding aluminium, we want the arc to uh, not finish too quickly, so we need to ramp down a little bit. So again, half a second to a second is a very good ramping down time. So we're, we're trying to get the current to gradually decrease, which means that the, the well pool is slowly hardening. It's, it's getting solid. Okay, this reduces the chances of craters. And then obviously we don't want to just finish at zero, you know, ampage, just finish. So we're going to finish at 10 amps. And then we have a post flow time. At the moment, this is set for six seconds. Basically what you do here is you put this as 10 times the um, tungsten diameter or three to 10 seconds, depending on how much welding current. The Post flow welding time does two features. Two features. One, it makes sure that the weld, while it's solidifying, still has gas over it. And two, it cools the ceramic down in an air cooled set. So you want a little bit. So if you're welding really, really hot, you're up at 150 amps, something like that, you might want 15 seconds just so that it can come out, just cool your ceramic a little bit and maybe stop you cracking it or anything like that. As you can see, then once we've set the base program, we don't need to adjust any of these settings. The only thing that we're interested in then is the central setting and press, and we can adjust ampage up or ampage down, depending on what we want. Now then, there's also other functions that we can adjust here. So if you keep on going across the graph, you'll come round and you can see here we can have trigger. So what we can do here is we can have trigger on, trigger off, trigger latch, whereby if we're doing long runs, so we don't have to keep the trigger pressed all of the time. 
but most functions will be used on the trigger on, trigger off. We then can move along and we can have the HF on or HF off. I would recommend really you always have the HF on. Your next setting coming round is pulse. We'll talk about that in a second. Then we'll move round and this is where you alter from DC to AC. So again, if we press here, we can move it from AC to DC really easily. And then when it comes to the end of the program, you will get menu. So if you ever get lost, I would always recommend you come to menu and you work your way back. So then if you wanted to change from AC to DC, the easiest way to do this, because she is quite sensitive, is scroll through the whole program until you get to menu and then go back one and then change over to the AC. We then, obviously, if you wanted to weld some stainless steel or something like that, we would uh, be able to move on to pulse, etc. As you can see here, we have some, because we've moved into AC now, we have extra settings. This first one here, this 80%, this is the cleaning effect. At the moment, that's set for 2080. So it's actually telling you on this welder the um, negative DC side. Normally we would have something like 3070, so I would actually recommend that the moan no more than 70. So let's go back to the beginning, AC, come back, come back, come back, come back. There's the 60 hertz, and there's your 80, so we're just going to adjust that down to 70. That's a good cleaning effect for most jobs. You can move around for that. Cleaning effect is basically what we use, the difference between the positive electrode and negative in the wave. And we use this to clean off the oxidization layer on the aluminium. So you can always tell when your uh, cleaning effect is not correct in the fact that your weld will be cloudy. It won't, it, won't, it won't appear hot. You've not cleaned off, you've not burned off enough of the oxide layer. So you can play around with this a little bit. This welder goes from 50. I've noticed some welders go the other way. They go from 0 to 50. So you have to play around with them a little bit to just find out which way round they're actually you know being told the next setting as you can see there is hertz now hertz is how many pulses of heat or how many um, waves per second so at the moment this is set for 60 and this machine will actually go up to 99 okay Basically what this does when you're welding is it focuses the arc. So your arc, instead of being a, a big, large V, all of a sudden it will make it go narrow down so it's very narrow. If we were doing something like an alloy wheel or somewhere something like that, whereby we want fat welds, we want nice big pools, I would recommend you keep this at the 50 or the 60 hertz. And that's all the settings really you would need to change, if ever, on the AC side. The next one is obviously if we change to DC. So we're going to go all the way over to menu, press the menu. And then what we're going to do is come back, change to DC. Carry on through. And now we're going to show you, if we want to do some stainless steel, we're going to show you some pulsed. So what you do then is to... Keep on scrolling until you get this function and then press enter. As you can see, it's very fast moving off the display. Then if you twist the, the knob slightly, you can actually bring up this symbol, which is the pulse. Tick it. And now we can carry on through the program. Now, as you can see, now we've brought on some extra settings. So this is your bottom current. So if you can imagine you've got high current, low current. And the welder is going to pulse between these two currents at a speed that you set in hertz. One hertz is one second. So obviously this is quite fast. So again, 35% is how much it spends in the, the, in the high to the low. So I usually set this for 50. But if you obviously if you wanted a hotter weld, you would set it 60, 70, whatever. But a nice setting to start with is 50 and then I'm going to set that for one second pulse and then 
and we have got our top current. Now our top and our bottom current, I usually go half. So say for instance, we're welding some thin stainless steel, we're probably gonna be around about 40 amps, something like that. I would then set my frequency. So I've got 50 hot, 50 cool, at one second, one hertz. And I need to make that half of the 40, so that's 20. And that's a good base for a pulse. The settings, if you switch off and switch the machine back on, will come to what you were set before. The only thing that is a bit problematic about the machine is if you do change from AC to DC, it doesn't remember this unless you put it into the memories. So you need to save it into the memories. So if we come all the way across here to menu, over one, press the DC, change to AC. As you can see, the pulse setting still stays. If you want it, fine. If not, what you might need to do then is just go one more over, tick it and switch it off. This is the digital program settings for the Crossout 200S AC-DC.